Today we're going through some of the best new features in Blender 2.81 in a quick 5 minute overview. We'll be highlighting the best features, but there's a full list in the link below. New remeshing options have been added. These new remesh modes help combine multiple objects. We have a new open VDB option, which is great for combining objects super quickly for sculpting, and we have a quadruflow remesher, which is slower but better for maintaining good topology. They are accessible under the Sculpting, Remesh menu, or under the Mesh properties. Overall, sculpting speed and feel has been improved. It's a lot easier to sculpt your mesh and feels much faster. It's also optimized and you're able to move more polygons on screen at a time. Several tools have been added to the sculpting tool set, along with a UI cursor to display where your brush radius is along the normals of your model. The Poly tool has been improved for retopology and new masking features have been added. One of the coolest new sculpting tools is this new sculpting brush preset called Armature. It simulates an armature bone in a mesh and it's useful for quick and rough reposes while sculpting. You can adjust the length of a bone by adjusting the radius of the brush. Intel's OpenAI Denoiser is now included in Blender. The new AI denoising node in Blender uses Intel's denoising system, which uses machine learning and render pass data to intelligently denoise 3D renders. In my render tests, I saw a 1000% increase in speed with acceptable results. Of course, this feature has its limitations, which I go through in one of my earlier videos, but it is a great tool that can drastically improve render times. Another great time saver for Cycle users is optics rendering is now included in Blender. Blender now supports NVIDIA's new RTX features with varying results, but on average saving up to 25% on render times. Unlike the AI denoising, this has no limitations, it's just purely faster. Lots of minor tweaks to improve cycles in EV under the hood. Shader nodes have been improved, including more options and inputs on math, volume, noise, and mapping nodes. Shadow artifacts have also been reduced when using bump mapping as seen here on Blender's website. You can now view cycle passes in the viewport, which is great for previewing your passes in real time. Transparency has been improved in EV and now supports the holdout shader, which is great for compositing effects. Not the most exciting feature on the list, but plenty of small tweaks have been made to improve the overall Blender experience. Several small UI improvements have been made. The outliner now has sync selection with the 3D viewport, walk navigation with the up and down keys, box select with the click and drag, and range selection with shift click all make the outliner much more user friendly. There's also a batch renamer by pressing control F2 with multiple items selected, you open the options menu, allowing you to batch rename your selection. This is great for renaming large groups of objects and organizing larger scenes. The file browser UI has been redone with ease of use in mind, now operating like a more traditional file browser with filter and view options included. You can now affect the origin of the object directly. This is a normal feature in most 3D applications and a welcome addition in Blender. Grease Pencil UI and workflow has been tidied up to perform better and draw strokes more accurately, and there are also new brushes and presets included. The video editor has seen updates too. Not an often used feature in Blender by many, but that may change now that they have added prefetching, allowing you to fill the cache for frames in the background to provide faster playback. This small feature makes a huge difference as before video editing was kind of sluggish and now it operates more like a traditional video editing application. We couldn't possibly go through every little thing that the Blender team added this update. They did quite a bit and if you want that full list, it's in the link below. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite new features are in Blender 2.81. If you're interested in supporting this channel or getting access to my project files, check out my Patreon and thank you for watching.